Hi everyone, my name is Valentine Adwakar and I welcome you to this workshop on backfill and checkpoints on discovery. So as part of the objectives for this course, we'll take a look at an introduction to backfill, how to use backfill, and finally we'll look at an introduction to checkpoints. Now to further break down our objectives, um, we'll take a look at uh, the definition of, of backfill you know, and why do we need backfill? What is the essence of using backfill? And then we'll take a look at the drawbacks of backfill. And finally, um, how do we secure the progress of our jobs and how do we use backfill partitions? Next, um, we'll look at the definition of checkpoints. Um, what is the essence of using checkpoints? The goals and benefits of checkpoints. Um, how do we add checkpoints to our code to maintain the state of our um, the state of the progress of our program or our jobs. And finally, we'll take a look at a practical example on how you could add checkpoints to, you know, like a Python script. So what exactly is backfill? So backfill is simply a partition that consists of the nodes that make up the discovery cluster. So I would say backfill allows you access to all other partitions that you aren't authorized to access, right? So uh, the backfill partition is the partition with the highest wall time. You know, it has the wall time value of 14, 14 days and two hours, which means that you have, you know, enough time to run whatever data simulation or analysis you're trying to run compared to all other nodes that have less than 14 days of wall time. I think um, like the normal partition, which has seven days. Now, backfill also is a partition with the lowest priority, right? So this means that, you know, your job may be paused indefinitely or multiple times, depending on the demand for higher priority jobs. So in the next couple of slides, <clears throat> we'll talk about, you know, higher, what higher priority jobs and lower priority jobs are. So what is the purpose of you know, backfill, like why do we need backfill? <clears throat> well, now think about it. Whenever you have nodes um, that make up a given partition, whenever those nodes that make up a given partition are not fully utilized by those who are authorized to use it, you know, the resources become idle. In that way, no one is using it, right? So the only time it's being used is, is whenever those who are authorized to use it get to use it. So the backfill partition was created to ensure that there is no underutilized resources or nodes, right? So um, with that, you can gain, it also gives you access to, you know, more resources. So currently we have um, one, GPU, uh, one GPU node that is available to users. And you also have other GPU nodes that are within other partitions that you're not allowed to access, right? So if you take advantage of the backfill partition, it gives you access to those resources. It gives you access to just those GPU um, nodes, you know, in as much as you are in, you know, authorized to use it like directly, technically. Now the backfill partition, just like we discussed in the previous slide, it has the higher wall time of 14 days and two hours, which gives you enough time to run, you know, whatever simulation you want to run. Now, in as much as, you know, backfill, the backfill partition has its own good sides, you know, wall time of 14 days, you know, it gives you access to all other resources that you are in, authorized to use. It has its own drawbacks as well. So it is the lowest priority partition. Now, what this means is the backfill partition implements what we call job preemption. <clears throat> now, the job preemption is an act of halting or stopping lower um, one or more multi, um, one or more lower priority jobs in order to allow higher priority jobs to run. Now, what are higher priority jobs? Now, higher priority jobs are jobs that are submitted by users who have authorized access to a given partition. And lower priority jobs are jobs submitted by users who do not have authorized access to a given partition, right? So um, if you, excuse me. So um, 
let's say I have, you know, authorized access to partition A, right? And then um, at that time, at a given time, you submitted your job to my partition, which is partition A, using the backfill partition, like, you know, using the backfill specification in your batch script. Now, whenever I step in to, you know, do some form of computation or submit a job, and it happens that my job is hanging in the queue, you know, meaning that there's no resource or res there are no resources available to, you know, perform, you know, my, my job, like to carry out my job process. Now, in that case, the slum scheduler is going to start looking for those who do not have authorized access to use that partition. And when it finds, it finds out that you are, you know, currently using that partition, it's going to kick you out. Right, and give me the higher priority because I have auto, um, direct, you know, authorized access to utilize that partition. So, in a case where you know your jobs are kicked out because you, you know, your job is a low priority job, um, your job is definitely going to be requeued or restarted, right? Um, and when it, that happens, you could lose the progress of your job, and and. <clears throat> We don't want that to happen. So that's why, you know, we need to know how we can secure the progress of our jobs, right? So the way you can do that is to add checkpoints to your script or to your code. So checkpoint is basically, you know, prevents you from starting all over again, you know, whenever your job is kicked out, requeued or restarted. So how do we use the backfield partition? So basically, um, in the resource request section of your batch script, you know, where you have the S batch um, directive followed by the partition flag and then the value backfill, right? You just put, you just assign the value backfill to this flag and that's how you gain access to the backfill partition. <clears throat> so what is checkpoint? So basically checkpoint means saving your work after every substantial computation, right? It's as simple as that. So think about it. Let's say um, you, you're composing the letter on um, a notepad and for some reason you have to go get lunch and then come back to continue with writing the letter. If you don't save, you know, the state you were in, you know, if you don't save it, um, something might happen. So let's say your, your laptop trips off, the power the power in your laptop trips off or your, your system, you know, freezes, you know, if that happens, you're gonna have to start all over again, you know, to start composing that letter. So what you wanna do is to make sure that you save the current state, you know, of that letter so that whenever you're done having your lunch, you can come back and resume, you know, that state, you know, you can come back and start start from the way you stop, you know, rather than starting all over again. So that's the whole idea of checkpoints. So what is the purpose, you know, just like we discussed, you know, we want to resume, you know, our job processing from the last saved state. So we don't have to, you know, start all over again whenever an interruption occurs <clears throat> or whenever, you know, um, your lower priority jobs were kicked off based on, you know, the demand from higher priority jobs. Okay, so what are the goals and benefits of checkpoints? Well, um, we, we, we can talk about preemption in the case of shared resources. So like, you know, it's a shared resource, right? And if, <clears throat> and we, we don't want a situation whereby, you know, um, a, higher, a higher priority job steps in, you know, kicks us out, and then we have to start all over again. No, so by using checkpoint, you know, even if such thing happens, you know, we do not start all over again. We just start from the last safe state, you know, in our program and just continue from that state whenever, you know, we've been, you know, requeued or, you know, added back to the queue. So it also helps with the debugging, right? So let's say you submit your job, <clears throat> you can view the state file and see, you know, the, the status of your code and see if you actually get in that output, that, that output that you, you require. 
and also you can monitor the, the status of your program as it runs or as, as it keeps. All right, so how, how do we add checkpoints? Like how do we go about this, right? So there are three workflows, right? First thing you wanna do is to look for a state file, right? So um, if, if in, your, um, in your program, you wanna check, you wanna have like an if statement or a try catch block that checks to see if a state file exists, you know? And if that state file doesn't exist, then the next step would be to either create a state file or to read the state file, right? And then the final step is to, you know, save the values or the output of your program periodically so, so that in a case or in the event where there's an interruption, you wouldn't have to start all over again, right? So um, this is our Python script example, which is a simple script that, you know, imports the sleep library. Um, you have a start and end, um, finish a start and end um, variable um, with one and 10. And then we just loop in through this variable and print in the output and sleeping after, you know, every value is being pre printed out. Well, this doesn't have any checkpoint. If an interruption occurs, we'll just start all over again. We'll start from one and print all the way down to nine. <coughs> Excuse me. Now the next Python script actually implements checkpoints. So with this script, we import in our sleep library and then we have the try catch block. So with a try catch block, we want to check to see if we have any existing state file. And if we do have an existing state file, we want to read its contents to see if um, we, if there is any value that we last saved, right? Now, if it sees, if it checks and sees that, okay, there is no value, you know, we don't have any state file or we don't have any value. Well, except we're going to do, um, we're just going to start from one and then um, we have the end value, which is 10. And we're going to look through, print out the value, sleep for one um, second, and then Within the loop, we want to make sure we're saving every print um, statement. We want to make sure that we are saving the outputs we have, you know, in a case or in the event where an interruption occurs, would we'll continue from that last saved state, right? Well, there's a downside to this as well. The only downside is um, your, the performance is just going to reduce, you know, because you, you're reading a file, you're saving, you're saving every step, or you're saving it maybe after every five minutes, you know, that should be like, you know, the only performance issue you're gonna have. So I'm, I'm gonna jump into um, what this code looks like and how we can, you know, run this code on discovery. So let me switch to my terminal. <clears throat> Just give me a second. All right, so um, I have my terminal open. Oops, 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 I'm gonna open a new one. So um, let me share my other screen so we can see what's going on. All right. Reduce this. Okay. So I'm going to log into Discovery. Okay. Then I'm going to open a new, um, just a window by the side here, and also log into Discovery so I can have two windows. All 
right, so um, so I have a folder which is checkpoints folder. And in this folder, I have um, a fast program, which is a program that, um, program one.py, which is a code that doesn't have like a checkpoint implementation. So we have program one.py. Yeah, so that's program one.py. It doesn't have any checkpoint implementation. And then program two.py is what we have right here, you know, where you, we have our checkpoints. Um, let me see this. Program two py. All right, so that's program two the py. Um, we have a try catch statement here. Um, we specify, you know, we want to at, at the beginning of this code we want to check if we have an estate file. We want to read its in um, its content, and if we find anything, then we just want to continue with our loop and you know continue to save the state. But if we don't find anything, we're just gonna you know start afresh, assign a new value which is one, and then loop all the way down to um, 1,099 um, and also keep saving the states as we, um, as our job is being processed. So I'm going to save this and then we'll take a look at our batch script. I'm going to clear up my console so we can have room. So I have my batch script. Um, um, I have my job name as checkpoint, my output, which is going to send um, let's say if we have any errors, it's just going to send it to this RP file. And then I have a wall time of 30 minutes. And then I have my end task set to one. I have my CPUs per task set to one and memory per CPU to two gig. Now let's do this. Um, I'm going to have to, I missed something here. I'm going to have to specify the backfill partition. Sorry about that. Okay. So here we're going to have sbatch, it should be uppercase sbatch partition, and then we're going to set our partition to backfill. All right. So we set our partition to backfill, we load a Python um, module, which is what our code depends on. And finally, we use the answer command to execute um, our script, our Python 2 script, which has the checkpoint implementation. All right, I'm going to save this. And then over here, I'm going to use the watch command to view the real time progress of my job in the queue. So I'm going to do a watch as queue. All right, so I have no job submitted yet. Um, so now if I submit my job with an S batch command, Now we see my job is right on the queue, right? So, um, so we have the backfill. Um, my job is submit has been submitted to the backfill partition with a name checkpoint, and then it's currently running. So let's let's view the output of the state file. So if I do an ls, you can see that it created a state file here, and this state file contains the 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 different states sa um, saved states, right? So if I do a cat on the state file, we can see the current value we have here is thirty three. Um, let me use the command echo so you can see that well. Okay, so we have the current saved state which is forty two. Um, so let's say for some reason I interrupt this job, right? So I'm going to use the scancel command to cancel um, my job, right? So let's just um, assume that, you know, this cancellation was based on, you know, a higher priority job stepping in or demanding for a resource. So if I cancel this job and do an LS, right? And at this point, you can check the output file, which is a, a checkpoint out to see, you know, just to debug, to see what happened, you know, was your job canceled? What, what happened? What interruption happened? All right, so we can see that, okay, this is the error. This is, this is something that happened. I canceled the job, right? So we can see that output there. And also if I check 
the state file, I can see that the last saved state was 71. Let me use the cat state and echo just so you can see it well. So the last saved state was, was 71. Now, <clears throat> um, so let's say, you know, after your job got kicked out, you know, your code was able to save, you know, the last, you know, the last state, which is the value 71. Um, now, what if um, after the higher priority job has been processed and your job gets back into the queue, right? So I do a S batch. So let's say I do it S batch command on the same script file. Now, just for us to see that this is actually working, I'm going to add, I'm going to append the watch command to the cat command. And also, we're going to do a cat on the state file. And we're going to do an echo just so you can see. Oh, so we don't need an echo. Sorry about that. Since we have a watch command. So when I submit the script, what I expect, you know, for the script to do is to, you know, first of all, read the, the last state we have from the state file. So it's going to start from 71 to 72 and so on, instead of starting all the way, you know, from one. So if I submit this, right, so we have 71, this is our state file and it's currently running. So you should see this value change from 71 to 72. Okay, there you go. So it's currently saving all the states, 77, 79, 81, and so on. So in this case, if any interruption of course, you know, you wouldn't have to start all the way from the beginning. All you need to do is to make sure that your code reads the last state, the last saved state, and continues from the last saved state. So um, that is basically how you use you know, checkpoints, um, back, um, backfielding checkpoints on discovery. So I'm going to switch to my other screen. All right, and this brings us to an end of um, backfielding checkpoints. So let us know if you have any questions. If you have any questions, send us an email to hpc-team at nmsu.edu. And also for more information, you can also visit our website at um, hbc.nmsc.edu or our wiki page at um, hbc-wiki.nmsc.edu. Um, thank you all for attending this workshop. I really appreciate it. Um, stay safe.